Welcome everybody to the seventh PCB Investigator physics tutorial. In this video I want to introduce you to the latest developments of the V12 version of PCB Investigator physics. With the V12 version there's a completely new way of defining current paths available, which is much simpler to enter and also more precise, especially when parallel connected components are used. In addition, PCB Investigator now also integrates an own part library, the EPL or EasyLogix part library. By matching your bill of material with the EPL, you can benefit from various advantages, which I will also show in this tutorial. But now let's start with a new simulation project. In this tutorial, we will do an electric thermal co-simulation of the maximum current path of an automotive voltage converter. So here's the design. It is a four-layer board. Um, where we will simulate the path from the J1 component why the L1, the two MOSFETs, why this L2 coil to the, to the jumper 2. But before we do this, let's check the properties of all the different components. And as you see, there are not so many information um, added already in the data itself. So we have a mounting type, a height, but there's no material part number and also the manufacturer is missing and so on. Therefore, we can import the bill of material. You can use this component attribute import function here to select an Excel file or a CSV file. So this bill of material for this design has the reference designator in the C column, which is automatically uh, recognized by PCB investigator. The other columns are added as additional properties. So we have the material part number, the manufacturer, quantity I don't want to, imp um, to import, footprint, the libref I also don't want to have, comment and description. So he found 60 of 60 components, so that's fine and I add the attributes now. If I now again check the properties of a component, I see those additional properties. So we have the footprint, we have the comment, and we have also the material part number. And this material part number is used in the background to match with the EPL, the EasyLogix part library, which I now do now. So now the match is already done. We found um, four component types which are not in the EPL. So this is the test point, for example, or only those test points. But the others were found, and the nice thing you now see is the so-called real body outline. So this additional outline comes from the EPL library, and this is the real outline of the component itself. So this is not the package outline in your eCut library, so this is the real body outline of the component, and it comes out from the EPL. So this makes also the simulation, but also some other analysis, much more precise. So for example, if you check component to component or if you check for AOI distances or all the other things which PCB Investigator offers, um, using this real body outline instead of this too large CID data package outline uh, gives you much better, much precise result. And also in PCB Investigator physics, when we go into the 3D model and simulate um, the board, we use this real body outline now um, and extrude this real body outline and simulate with this real body outline instead of using the package outline. So this makes also the simulation much more precise and um, you will get a better result at the end. But now let's set up a new simulation project. So most things you already know from the other video tutorials. So we want to simulate voltage drop and temperature. Um, the board parameters are already set, so we have FO4 material on the preprex, copper on the signal layers. The heights are also defined, so that is fine. For the operation state, I just call it max current path. And I will show you a new function here. So with this tool, I will move this other window in the background. So with this current path finder, it is very easy to find a path from the J1 to the J2 component. I want to go via 10 components maximum 
I want to ignore C and Ds, and I want to ignore ground lenses. So now, now let's search for path. So he found two paths, and I can activate both of them. So we go from the J1 to the L1, via the two MOSFETs, into the um, L2 coil, and then to the jumper 2. So he found automatically this way, and this is exactly one which I want to simulate. So we will add those paths to the operating state. So here they are. So now normally I would enter the amperes for each net separately. So maybe uh, like in this case 10 amperes. So 10 amperes in, 10 amperes out. Here also in and out 10 amperes. Here 10 in, 5 via Q1, 5 via Q2. And again 5 from Q2 and from Q1 into this net. So I had to, I would have to enter those amperes manually. So this is like it works in V11 and former versions. But what is now new? So I define the L1 component. Um, I make a pin bridge between pin 1 and pin 2. So here's pin 2, pin 1, sink and source of this, of this net. And I bridge them. And I add a resistance. This resistance between those two pins can be temperature depending or a fixed value. And for the L1 component, we have 15, no, 14 milliohms according to the data sheet. For Q1, I also add a bridge resistance of 5.9, which is also given by the data sheet. Q2, the same, I bridge both pins and define a bridge resistance. 5.9. And we have the L2 here also. I add a bridge between pin 2 and pin 1. And the L2 has, according to the data sheet, 0 0.5 milliohms. So now, via this bridge, it is virtually like one large net. So I can now activate all pins. And I say 10 amperes I want to output on J1. And that's it. Everything else is on auto. So this is something which is new in V12 and was not possible before. So I don't have to define how um, the voltage or how the current is split between Q1 and Q2. It's just auto. So he uses the internal resistance and the copper resistance and the current is simulated as it really is in reality. What I now also will do is I add power losses. So all of them are active, but I want to determine the power loss according to the bridge resistance. So I entered a resistance um, for the Q and RDS on of 5.9 milliohms. And the amperes, yeah, I don't know. This will be simulated and then also the temperature will be used with the simulated currents. So I set them to active and using the bridge resistance. This larger zero says, um, I don't know exactly how many power loss we will have because this, this depends on the current, which is not yet simulated, but there will be a power loss. And it would be also possible to make an, an offset. So if, a, if you have a fixed part of maybe um, 10 milliwatt or something, you can enter it here and then it will be 10 milliwatt plus um, the power loss of, of the current and the bridge resistance. But we have no fixed port here, we just enter those um, according to the bridge resistance. So now gets, let's get further. We don't want to use transient simulation in this case, we use a static simulation of our max current path. And components, yes, we have those components here, the, the L and the Q, the ones which have power losses but I want to have all the others in the simulation too, but not the test points. So I add the others, and also this NT um, is not a real component, So, but I add the others. And also what I want to do is for the coils, I want to change the material. So we have different materials in our library, um, and here's a high conductive and very high conductive. So we use a very high conductive material for these two coils. So for the two coils, I add or change the material from the standard component material to the very high component material. 
Of course, it's also possible to define own materials if you like. So let's go to the environment. Here we have 20 degrees on both sides and we use a fixed heat exchange of 12 watt per square meter Kelvin. Yeah, and that's it. So we start on the GPU. We use the NVIDIA GeForce graphics adapter, uh, which has a lot of power and, and um, makes a great performance on this, on this uh, simulation tool. Uh, we use 100 micrometer raster and that's it. So let's start. Okay, so the simulation is now finished. Uh, it took a bit less than three minutes, so I think this is a really great performance. And here is the result. So we'll start with the current density on this board. So I activate the current density overlay and the top layer, and I add the animated current flow. So here you see from the J1, the current is going um, to the L1, while the L1 through these two Q components. And what you see here is we have pin 1, 2, and 3 on the same net. Um, then we go to this coil L2 and back to J2. But not only the top layer is used, so we have a lot of drills here. So you see there are a lot of drills everywhere so also the inner layers are used for example the second layer or the third layer and also the bottom layer so all these layers take take a bit of current and um, are used in the simulation in the same way so important now to see is for the two different Q components in the report um, we can find out that the pin 5, so this is this one here, has 4.9 amperes in both cases. And if we take a look onto pin 1, 2, and 3 of the Q1 component, so these are those three lines here, we see 1.8 amperes for pin 1 and around about 1.5 for pin 2 and 3. So one pin 1 um, has more current but I think this is quite clear because it's closer to the L2 component. But you see also these things are considered in the simulation. Here again, pin 1, 2, and 3 on the Q2 component. Um, also 1.8 amperes roundabout for pin 1 and 1.5 amperes for pin 2 and 3. So this is also because of the close distance of pin 1 to the L2 component. And you see that even if in the simulation input parameters, this was one pin, I can show you again. Up here you see in the operating state for the Q component, we have pin five on the on side and on the other side is only one plus. So this is also something new in the V12 version, I forgot to say at the beginning. So that means there's more than one pin connected on the same net. So when they are, they are um, gathered here, in this, in this input parameter as one pin, but for the simulation, of course, it is used, or all the three physical pins are used separately. And as you see the simulation result, you see for each single pin, even if in the input parameters, this was shown as one pin, the one plus pin. So if you now switch to um, the potential data, um, to see it better, I will give the top layer another color, so I make it gray. So now you see, um, because here this is a ground net, which we did not simulate, but the voltage drop or the potential difference is now um, for the whole path. If you would do the same simulation in V11 without pin bridges, each single net has a voltage drop, um, but there's not one voltage drop visible or reported for the whole path. But now you see, if I add some notes up here and one note here, I see there's a difference of around about 190 millivolt. So we have a, a voltage drop of 190 millivolt through all these components, 
with their internal resistance um, from J1 to J2. So this is also something which is only, with, only possible in the V12 version of PCB Investigator. Yeah, now let's also take a look to the temperature overlay. So for the component, the L1 gets the hottest one um, because it has 15 or 14 milliohms and 10 amperes. So this is around about 60 degrees. But you see already the real body outline from the EPL, from the Isologix part library is used in the simulation, not the wrong or too large ECAT library package outline. So this is a real big advantage of um, PCB Investigator V12 um, in combination with the EPL. Also for the L1 component, you see the real body outline is used and not the wrong and too large um, package outline. If you go to the single layers, so here we don't need the current paths, we see a temperature from 7, 47 or 57 to 29 on this side. And also if we go through the different layers, you see the temperature on each inner layer or on each outer layer. Yeah, and with this, um, with these possibilities, I think, which V12 offers compared to V11, simulation even gets more and more simple and getting new operation states and input these parameters is simpler than ever before. Of course, we can also take a short look into the 3D uh, view of this board. So here again, you see the temperatures of each component and also for the copper layers. So you have the same view as in 2D, but more realistic here. So PCB Investigator in this way offers everything uh, which uh, a great simulation tool needs. So thanks for watching this seventh video tutorial of PCB Investigator Physics. And please take a look on our website or our Twitter account on our YouTube channel and all the other social medias. Um, we are there for you, we can support you, and we are open for any questions and ideas. Thanks for watching again and have a nice day.